Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, the fence expert. If you've watched any of my other review videos, you know what you're in for. Jeremy picks out videos from the YouTube universe that uh, he thinks that I'd like to react to or review. Reviews typically have a positive spin. We all know how many negative reviews are out there in YouTube land, and I'd like to change that. So without further review, here we go. This is Joe Everest, the fence expert. My family's been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. All right, guys, this week's video is titled How to Build a Fence, DIY Privacy Fence by BYOT. So it says it's going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, and it's going to be a horizontal privacy fence. If I know one thing, I know you guys love horizontal privacy fences. So let's check out and see how BYOT goes about building theirs. Let's talk about materials. For a 40 foot long span with a gate, I used all these materials. You can go ahead and pause it. I don't want to read all these. You also need a table saw, a level, a string line, measuring tape, two inch long exterior screws, eighth inch and half inch drill bit, spray paint, wood preservative with brush, six inch washer and bolts with washer and nuts, easy gate hardware kit, a square and a pencil, a drill or drills if possible. You also need a sawzaw, a skill saw and a chop saw. Man, that's a lot of saws. My oh my, that is one ugly fence line. Now you can see why we're doing all this work. First off, we have to demo out this old fence and the only thing that's holding up are these metal posts, which are actually in pretty good condition, but the bolts are no match for the saws on. Ah, uh, the demo portion of a project does make me feel good inside. I don't know. So it's interesting to see those steel posts that were installed as a brace post. Pretty, pretty good idea, right? The uh, the wood posts have obviously seen better days, uh, but rather than replace the wood posts, they went ahead and just installed uh, what looked like maybe two inch or inch and five eight steel posts, and then bolted them directly to the fence to try to get a few more years out of the fence. Not a bad idea. The one portion of this project that I'm very happy with is that I did have a helper for this entire project, which comes in extremely handy because a lot of this is a two-man job, or at least it makes it a lot easier with two people. Now I have made the executive decision of salvaging these posts because they are in very good condition and actually straight. I spray the surface with 80 grit sandpaper and I spray it with a nice glossy black because the whole galvanized look is not working for me on this project. Once all my posts are painted and looking fabulous, it is time to move on to my 4x4 posts. I don't need a super tall fence line which is why I bought 10 foot posts and I'll be cutting them in half. This way you can save a little money in the long run. I measure the whole locations on the steel pipe and then transfer that to the wood post, trying to be as accurate as possible. I suggest using a fatter bit than you actually need because that gives you a little leeway on. So one thing I might have done differently, unless I was the one that installed those galvanized posts, I don't know how they're set. I don't know how deep they are. I don't know how much concrete was used. I might have gone ahead and pulled those posts, just set new posts. You know, if we're going through the time and expense of building a new fence, let's build it new all the way uh, so that we're sure of exactly how the posts are set. By reusing the steel posts, you're kind of relying on, you know, the, the expertise of whomever set those posts. Not maneuvering these posts once they're in. At this point, go ahead and insert your bolts and see if your measurements actually turned out. Once your bolt makes it to the other side, go ahead and place a washer and a nut on each bolt and hand tighten it. Now that you know your post is not going anywhere, go ahead and take your drill and tighten it fully, making sure you're checking for levelness as you go. As you can see, I'm a little off, so what did I do? I took a couple washers, put them in between the post and the steel rod, and look at that. Boom. Done nice fix. Once all my posts are in, I take a string line and string across all the posts to figure out exactly the height I want and make sure it's congruent with all the other posts. I then take my 2x10 pressure treated lumber and rip 2 inch strips on my table saw. I'll be cutting these down and attaching them to the posts. Pressure treated lumber is perfect for exterior use, but it only works if the solution is actually on the lumber itself. And if we make all these cuts, it's not on both two sides. So what we do, we take our pressure treated solution and spread it across all the boards. That way it can last for years to come. Now in all reality, the only reason why I have to do this step is because the fact that my cedar planks are only eight feet long and it can't reach from post to post, which is why I have to put this ledger on both sides of each post. Just keep that in mind because hopefully you don't have to do this step. 
Once this is taken care of, it's now time to prep my cedar planks by pre-drilling all of the holes. Yes, all of them. Do not try and avoid this step because if you do, your boards will crack once you start screwing into it. You know, so if you're building it from scratch, I was just thinking through when he had said his posts were eight foot on center, which is typical for, you know, vertical privacy. Again, another point for setting new posts, we would typically set these posts at six foot centers. That way you don't run into the problem of running out of picket. But again, you know, he wants to reuse the posts. So this is the way that works for him. But I know from experience, since I didn't want to drill these either. Once you install your first board, you want to check for levelness and make sure everything looks nice and straight because it's a lot easier to fix now than later. I'm using a half inch spacer board between each plank. The spacing can be whatever you want, but I feel that a half inch or a little bit greater is the perfect eye appealing look. You know, and using, you know, we would still probably call it a jig, right? So using a jig that's half inch is a great idea. So you, you see... Uh, you see some guys that try to measure each and every space. I don't care how good of eyesight you have. That, that spacing is going to be different for each and every, each and every spacing. By using a half-inch you know, spacer or half-inch jig, you make sure that every space is the same width for the entire fence. It's a great idea. I just laugh when I see those fences with a full inch space. <laughs> what do they think? Anyways, the main thing you want to think about when installing this type of fence, or really any fence you're installing, is making sure it looks level. If it doesn't look level, your eye will catch it and it will drive you nuts. Now I'm starting from the top down, which is easier if you do have two people, but if you don't have two people, I would definitely suggest doing it from the bottom up because that way you have gravity on your side and you don't have to worry about trying to hold on to each board every single time. On a quick side note, I do realize that most people will not have this type of post system already installed in their yard, but I do, and I didn't want to dig holes, so sorry for not showing that one. Maybe in another BYOT. And of course, no fence project would be complete without a gate, so let's make a gate. And I am using Easy Gate, and in all reality, this system does make it quite easy to make. You can make it any size you want as long as you have this bracket system, and it really does make it quite easy. So I haven't used the Easy Gate system, but it certainly makes sense. Uh, you know, it makes sure that each of your corners are 90 degrees, and it provides bracing for those corners. I could see how it would make how it would have benefit over just a traditional. A wood frame gate, especially for the DIY crowd. I need to be a spokesperson for these guys. As long as your posts are square, this project is quite simple because the fact that all you have to do once the frame is taken care of is screw it to the post and you should be good to go. Once you have the gate installed and swinging correctly, go ahead and install your slats right onto the framework itself. Now this is not an easy project even with two people, so as you can see, the light will be dimming because of the fact that we were here all day and all night, so on to day two. Now I do have to cut off some of these tops, so I take my square, strike a line, and use my skill saw to cut one side and then the other. Just make sure you're careful when you do this because it is a sharp blade and uh, things might shoot at you, like a little block. Boom. Now that all the tops are cut off, you are ready for your top cap. I start out by measuring it from post to post, and I measure to the center of the next post. I adjust the angle of my chop saw to 25 degrees. Now you don't have to have an angle on this, but it does create a better butt joint once you join both ends together. Did that sound dirty? Kind of. I think butt joint was my old stripper name. Anyways, moving on. The nice thing about this top cap is that you don't have to be too insanely accurate with your measurements as long as it's supported by both posts. Also make sure you're looking at your lumber and noting any weird marks that are on your lumber making sure that's on the side that's actually down and you can't see it because no one wants to see that. When placing your top cap, feel free to hammer the end of your top cap. That way you know you have a tight seal on the- You know, I really like the look of top cap. Uh, in our area in Southwest Missouri, top cap isn't installed. I mean, just no one has it installed. We offer it, we show it at trade shows. The added expense is not, uh, not typically an option anyone chooses. I really like the looks of it. It really adds a nice finishing touch. I'm jealous of the guys that work in markets that this is commonplace because it is a nice look. The other side. Also, it's nice to sand the ends of your top cap just so they fit properly if there are any small outs. Take a quick measurement on each end to make sure you have even spacing on both sides. I also recommend pre-drilling your holes just to make sure nothing cracks because that's the last thing we want to worry about at this point. 
Then go ahead and screw in on both sides of the post making sure that the top cap is locked into place and onto the next one. Make sure they butt up against each other appropriately. Hopefully they land flush but doesn't have to be perfect. Just as long as you're happy with the seam. Go ahead and continue the process for each post just making sure that you need a nice flat cut on the end joint because you don't need an angle one. And in the end you have one mighty fine sexy beast of a fence. Look at that. That is one magnificent difference. Well guys, looks like that's it. Let me know what you think of that fence. I think it turned out pretty good, especially from, uh, I don't know if I'd call that a DIY. It seems like, seems like he kind of knew what he was up to, but uh, let me know what you think about the fence. I like horizontal fences. We don't build them enough. Um, the cost is typically prohibitive, but when we do build them, we really enjoy it because, uh, yeah, I really like horizontal fences. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But for now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, and I'm reminding you, the good fences make good neighbors, and I'll see you next time.